am in great company with this video. I'm on the east side of my patio with homegrown props because I don't have any examples to show. Orchid Ninja Sue Thompson asked me a question about how to pH or what is it about pH and organic media. Clearly, as I grow in inorganic media most of the time, 99% of my collection, to be exact, is in inorganic media. <laughs> it's very difficult to, when you say inorganic, it's, you know, inorganic or in organic as in organic media. But this video is a bit of a chat just because I don't have examples to show for. What about pH and organic media? So thank you, Sue Thompson. Appreciate your request. And I hope that this video actually does your request justice to get a better understanding. And if not understanding per se, to get a better idea of what could possibly be happening in a pot of organic media. So organic media obviously has the tendency to break down depending on the quality of the media that you have. More expensive organic media will take a lot longer to break down and more inexpensive media will obviously break down quicker and that will affect the pH in the pot. I can be speaking of bark, I can be speaking of poker chips, I can also give you an example with regards to what we get when it is just in sphagnum moss. All these components have a different ratio of degrading. So you can consider, let's say, heavy chunky bark is going to get degrade much, much slower than, for example, sphagnum moss. However, it also depends on how wet your media is going to be for a considerable amount of time, depending on the culture of the orchid and what needs to be taken into consideration. How much water is it getting? How often is the pot damp all the time? So the culture of the orchid will also depend on how long the media will last in your pot. Normally in organic growing, you're dealing with wet, dry cycles, which clearly extends the lifespan of any kind of media that you have in the pot. And the chunkier the bark or the media is, the longer it will take to deteriorate if you're growing your orchid with the principle of a wet, dry cycle. But there are many times in an orchid's life in a pot where it is growing so vigorously and so actively that the wet, dry cycle almost is impossible to maintain simply because as the orchid grows, there is more demand for water and nutrients. So the media will actually stay wetter longer than you thought when you first potted the orchid up. If you potted up a vanda in chunky bark and it was, let's say, a medium-sized vanda, I'm not even going with seedlings, let's just say a medium-sized vanda that is blooming in two or three years. You pot that up in chunky bark, wet, dry cycle is not a problem as long as it is that size. You've done a great job. Three years later, that thing has tripled in size and is blooming on two spikes. And suddenly the needs of the orchid start to increase, meaning that you're watering more often and the bark is actually staying wet more often. And now you have a media that has already been in the pot three years to the point at to where it's coming to now and the orchid is blooming and tripled the size. So the needs of the orchid increases and you're watering more often and suddenly the media stays wet for longer, which is a good thing because your orchid is growing and its needs are being met. So the bark breaks down, even chunky bark breaks down and suddenly your pH changes. So what do you do with a pH of chunky bark? First thing you can do is soak the pot for let's say four or five hours in plain water, measure the pH of the water that you're going to soak your pot in. Write that down and then soak your pot for four or five hours, take it out, and then you can measure the pH again that is left in the bucket that you soaked your pot in. And if that is below 5.6, 5.7, then you might want to consider either changing the media for fresh media or up your pH to such a degree that the nutrient uptake is still optimal, but you're canceling out the acidity in the pot. Know that long-term, you cannot just keep canceling out the acidity in the pot by raising your pH ever so often, because eventually that bark is gonna take over and then the seasons kick in and you're not watering as much and your orchid is sitting in acidic media. So a change of media would be necessary. But that is one way to check how is the pH level in my pot and is it still feasible? How much time have I got left? If your pH comes out at 5.7, 
after soaking it with plain clean water that has a pH, let's say of seven, and the soaking water comes out at 5.7, no nutrients, nothing in the pot, then you know that your media is on the point of breaking down because the water you're putting in has a much higher pH as opposed to what came out when it's soaked. Meaning a 5.7 pH is still agreeable for the roots of the orchid in the pot. But in order to reach a 5.7 pH after soaking in 7 pH, there is a much lower acidity in the pot already. Otherwise it wouldn't get to 5.7 pH. So what is actually happening, it's not that it's balancing out per se, but the acidity in the pot when you don't water is so low that it can raise to 5.7 after adding a 7 pH water for soaking. Does that make sense? Let me know if this makes sense. The climate in the pot, the pH, will only reflect a bracket, a fraction of what actually is happening in the pot based on the pH of the water that you soak the orchid in to test the pH at the end. It could be much, much more acidic than your results. So do not feel comfortable if your readings come to 5.7. And I'm saying 5.7 because that's a bit lower than 5.8 and that is the bracket that I'm comfortable with. 5.8, anything lower than that and I have to put a pH up into my pots. So that's why I'm giving you the 5.7 margin. So if you achieve a 5.7 runoff after a soak, know that the pot is already way below that and it's time to change the media. And that is talking chunky bark after maybe three to five years and then based on the fact that your orchid is growing and you're watering more so the media is wet for longer. The whole thing starts to increase in speed of degradation of organic media the smaller your bark pieces become, including the more sphagnum moss you add into that bark. You can add charcoal to cancel some of that out, but then I would say you might as well plant everything in charcoal so that it doesn't happen at all. The charcoal can only do so much for so much time. And in my opinion, charcoal will not extend the life and the quality of your media in the pot just because you've added a little bit of charcoal. I don't know if you do, but charcoal helps to keep the media sweeter, as in not as acidic, but long-term there is only so much because the whole pot, for example, all the roots in that pot are not all touching charcoal. The majority of the media is either bark, sphagnum moss, a little bit of perlite, and then charcoal mixed in to keep the media sweeter. But for how long? How long can charcoal at a certain percentage keep media sweeter if you are in actual fact watering a lot when you have smaller media components like medium-sized, small-sized bark, especially for seedlings? Charcoal can only do so much. The wetter the media it has to be kept, in order to keep the orchid happy, the quicker that media will break down and the quicker your pH will become too acidic for the roots to be in when you are not watering. So we can manipulate the pH in the pot every once in a while simply by raising the pH of the water we're applying to the orchids and that'll buy us some time. But it won't buy us time when it comes to the fact that the orchid is in a pot where the acidity is already too low. Any runoff water below 5.7, I would say err on the side of caution and change the media out. When it comes to orchids, just in sphagnum moss, especially summer bloomers, we get in the nursery sleeves and they are packed in with sphagnum moss. Now we get some complex hybrids as well that come in sphagnum moss especially mini complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. They like a lot more water than given credit for. Sphagnum moss will go acidic within a matter of months if it needs to be kept wet because the culture of the orchid requires it. The reason that sphagnum moss, for example, can stay on a Neophoenicia setup is because it goes crispy dry for like four to five months of the year during the winter, there is no watering on Neophoenicias. So the lifespan of sphagnum moss is not to be confused with, oh, well, it's in my pot and it'll last three years. It depends how the sphagnum moss is being allowed to dry out and that determines the lifespan of sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss will go acidic very, very quickly if kept wet at all times. And it doesn't even have to get fertilized 
the orchid I mean, doesn't even need to get fertilized in sphagnum moss. Even if it is on a mount and you're not fertilizing at that point in time, your roots will burn just by touching sphagnum moss, which is a phenomenon that I learned only after trial and error. And I was wondering why my roots were burning when I put sphagnum moss around my pots especially on the surface to counteract the dry top layer. Because the sphagnum moss, even though there was not a lot of it, it was kept wet for a long period of time. For my humidity requirements, I need to boost those. I kept it wet and it deteriorated even though it was not in the pot. It became acidic. So on top of that, my roots were touching not only acidic sphagnum moss, but I was also pHing at a pH of 6.3, then touched an acidic sphagnum moss and the root tips would burn. I only realized that a little bit late in my growing period in 2020, I changed all that around. Sphagnum moss will deteriorate, I would say six months if it's kept wet on a permanent basis, but it has to be kept wet on a permanent basis if we grow in sphagnum moss. Fine rooted orchids like Oncidiums and especially like the Novelty Phalaenopsis or the Summer Bloomers they like a very, very water retentive media and if grown in organic media, then sphagnum moss is the best bet. We can add perlite for aeration, but that won't change what happens to the decline of the sphagnum moss if it is kept wet for a long period of time. So if you're going to pH with sphagnum moss, for example, if it's going over, there is nothing that you can pH in order to balance out what is happening in the pot. You have to go in and repot. There's no tiding over, well, let me just correct that. You can tide a pot over for about a month and then it is high noon to get in there and change the media. You can tide it over maybe two months in the winter because you're not watering as much. But as a rule of thumb, sphagnum moss needs to be replaced every six months, even though it may still look fine. The acidity is already taking over and I find it super important to emphasize, and that's why I sometimes repeat this point, I find it super important to emphasize that the pH of the pot when you're not watering is the main factor to focus on than the pH when you water. It is when you are away from the orchid. What is happening in the pot while you are not addressing the orchid with fertilizer or a flush or something? What happens in those three to four days if you're going with a wet dry cycle? What happens with that pot in there while it's drying out. Those are the factors that for me, when it comes to organic growing are more important than when it comes to watering, because those factors are much longer than the time that you water the orchid. You water the orchid, it takes 10, 15 minutes. You flush the orchid, it takes 10, 15 minutes. You're okay with the bracket of the pH in the pot, maybe a day, but then you're left three to four days. And what is in that pot pH wise? afterwards. That is what I find is very important in organic growing is to make sure the pH of the pot remains 5.8 to 7 throughout. The minute the 5.8 drops, if you want to test the orchid and you soak it in water and you compare the two results, pre-soak and post-soak, and it is below 5.7, the pot is already way too acidic during the four or five days when you're not watering and that can kill roots fast. So I've had CG Roebling over there in the back. I've got Golden Peacock, Cornus Servi, Variety Chateladei joining us. And I've got Hibiki to the left. And I've been just speaking from memory from what happened in the years when I was growing in organic media and what I noticed, especially with sphagnum moss on mounts or trying to keep the surface of the pot with a higher humidity because of my environment. And I'm hoping that that clears up the whole pH situation with regards to organic growing. Fundamental is to focus on the climate of the pot while you are not watering, because that is mainly the time that the orchid is in an environment that may not be ideal. And then you come with water and you cancel that out. And fundamental is also knowing how long has your orchid been in the pot. The chunky media might be fine for the first three years because it, the orchid hasn't actually grown to have more requirements. Now that it is growing and bigger, its needs need to be met with more water. 
And suddenly your media that you think is nice chunky bark, it still looks fresh, is changing rapidly because it already has a lifespan of three years. And I'm not exaggerating with a lifespan of three years, especially vandacious orchids that are potted up. It's easily done, easily. It's not something that needs to be changed out that often because we are also remembering the wet dry cycle, the format of growing in organic media, mainly wet dry cycle. However, you've done your job. You've done a great job. Suddenly your orchid has tripled in size and now it's still in the same pot with media that still looks good because, you know, for three years it's had a wet dry cycle but suddenly the orchid needs a higher maintenance and care, water and nutrition because it's tripled in size. Now the media is already old and now we're changing the way we're keeping that media wet. It's gonna degrade very, very quickly. So when we talk about pH and optimal nutrition uptake, we always speak of a range between 5.8 and 6.5. I do anyway. Let me correct that. I speak of a range between 5.8 and 6.5 for optimal nutrition uptake. Those are my comfort zones. I could go to 5.6, I could go to 6.7, even in the setups that I have. But for organic growing or inorganic growing, I like to be in a comfort zone where I know that if I make a mistake, it won't take my orchid down. I will recognize the mistake by the symptoms of what's happening, for example, root burn, but it's not a complete disaster in the pot. So my lowest level that I allow my water to go into the pot, no matter what media I'm using is 5.8, just to cover worst case scenario and not go 5.6. Some pH meters are off by one or two. The little cheap gadgets that we buy take into consideration, they are not high scientific calibrated bloody blah Our margins are so low when it comes to pH that we don't need to have all this high tech stuff for our orchids. But in order to cover any eventualities, I try to make sure that my pH is never below 5.8 because what if my meter is off by one and I've got a 5.7 in my bucket if I were to use a very, very expensive measuring device. So 5.8 gives me that feeling that no matter if I'm just off or on the mark, I am still far enough away from the minimum pH that could prove detrimental to the roots. I'm far enough away with 5.8. That is why when I say organic growing is a question of knowing your media, knowing the needs of your orchid, how often is that pot wet? How often is it a wet dry cycle? And that will also tell you, does that pot need to be addressed? If there is a niggle, if there is a teeny tiny bit of doubt in your mind, change the media. And if you cannot change the media because there's no active root growth or for whatever reason, we can't always get into our pots, take it out of the pot gently, shake out whatever is going on and comes off loosely, put it back in the pot, but refresh with fresh media until such a time that you are actually able to address the entire pot, clean it out, change the media in its entirety. So we can jump in with organic media and intervene if for some reason there's a niggle in our mind saying there's something going on here. Deficiencies will show a pH problem especially in organic media, that we think we're pHing correctly, but we're seeing deficiencies of magnesium, especially magnesium is very easy to determine. And if magnesium is deficient, then calcium comes straight after that because the two are absorbed at the same pH. So if we see any deficiencies coming up, but it is not the right time, it cannot be addressed in its entirety, but there's a niggle in the mind that the media is off or just about to tip over and go off, we can still intervene without doing a whole massive root rejuvenation or repot, but to take the orchid out and to shake it out gently, whatever comes off around the edges, give it a little bit of a jiggle at the base, just tease the root system a little bit and put it back in the pot fill up with fresh media and that'll buy time until such a time that new roots are growing and the whole thing can be addressed without disturbing the entire root system and then setting the orchid back or stalling it. So there are opportunities to be able to change the climate of the pot 
keep the pH at a safe level within the pot without going in and doing the whole nine yards at the wrong time, just because you can see that the media is breaking down and you don't want to risk the health of your root system. It buys us time. That's what it does and that is all we need. We are not living in a climate that allows us to repot whenever we have to wait until such a time that the climate also helps us and helps the orchid to recover and grow. So Orchid Ninja Sue Sun, I wonder if this answered your question. I wonder if it was helpful to look at some pretty blooms while we chatted on my east side. I don't want to cut this subject short, but I am going to stop here and now because I can talk and I could end up talking in circles and it could become a little bit of either repetitive or I start to sound like I'm contradicting myself. The repetitive part, yes, I can repeat myself often. Contradicting is a matter of perception, but I like to keep things simple and not get too heavy and into too much detail based on what media, what size, what root size, how much do I water, have to water, orchid size. And if need be, I can break that down into specific examples. But I think for the first talk about pH and organic media, it is fundamental to respect the roots. And that is why I brought up what I did with regards to 5.8 and not lower. How to test the climate in your pot, soaking your orchid at a pH that you've measured prior and then measuring the water pH after four to five hours of a soak. And know that if it is below 5.8, I highly recommend that you do an intermediary refresh of the media if you cannot address the entire pot or that you change the media out entirely I'm going to stop right here. I'm looking forward to your comments. It's possible that they also will have more questions, which is great. Let's go for it. And any of those questions, I'll start to break down into other smaller, shorter videos using this one as a reference. I hope that this was helpful for the time being, food for thought. And I hope that you enjoyed the view of the orchids in bloom on my patio table. I appreciate your question. I appreciate your support. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make this video public. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Orchid ninjas will have access to this video. And if you think that it would be an interesting video to just make it public, great. And I'll make it public and I will not edit anything of what I'm telling you now out. But if you think, no, let's keep it between us fantastic. I'll keep it between us. Let the questions come in and we can go on into more specific examples or thoughts that came to your mind when you were listening to the Oncidium PPM video and that is where your comments came from. So I'm going to edit this video as if it were to go public, but if it doesn't go public, I don't care. Just know that the intro will look like it's going public. It is for your eyes only for the time being and then we can all decide whether this is worthwhile putting on air. So let me know about that part as well. Really appreciate your question. Thank you, Sue. I hope that something of what I said resonated with you. Looking forward to your comments and anybody that watches this video, thank you also for your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day, but please, please, whatever you do, stay safe and take care. Bye.